Okay, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the Asia Graphics uh, webinar session seven. So I am the chairperson for this session. So I'm Yuki Koyama from AIST and Grafinica, Japan. And today uh, we have two great speakers. So the first speaker is Professor Weiwei Su from Zhejiang University, China. And the second speaker is Minyuk San uh, from KAIST, South Korea. And each speaker will have 45 minutes, including discussion time. And uh, just as a reminder, uh, we welcome any questions or comments. So please don't hesitate to post uh, your comments to the chat box. Okay. So now, I'd like to introduce the first speaker. So the first speaker is Weiwei Su. So he is currently a full professor at State K Lab of CAD and CG in Zhejiang University. And he was a researcher in Internet Graphics Group at Microsoft Research Asia from 2005 to 2012, and a postdoc researcher at Ritsumeikan University in Japan. And he received his PhD degree in computer graphics from Zhejiang University and bachelor and master degrees in computer science from uh, Hohai University. His main research interests include uh, 3D reconstruction and image-based rendering and virtual reality and has published more than 90 papers, including uh, 30 papers on ACM transactions of graphics, uh, science robotics, CVPR, ICCV, uh, AI, and IEEE uh, TVCG. And he received Outstanding Research Researcher Award from NSFC in 2013. And today he will talk about a neural indoor scene rendering with reflections. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks again for the introduction. And uh, uh, my talk today is um, neural scene modeling and the rendering. Uh, let me first introduce some background. So uh, as we all know, the rendering is the core research direction in computer graphics. Given 3D geometry materials and lighting, so we can solve the rendering equation to obtain realis realistic images. So thus the rendering technique can be viewed as a forward inference engine. So after we change the geometry materials or change the light, the light source in this uh, position or something else, so we can use the rendering engine to render the new image so we can infer how the geometry change influence the image change. So however, uh, the forward rendering process has some technical challenges. So it since it is expensive to compute since it needs recursive computation to render global animations. And, <clears throat> and this very expensive, also very expensive to design uh, good high quality uh, 3D contents. Finally, it's hard to be used in inverse modeling. That means we cannot use directly uh, with the captured images. So, um, Recently, um, the development, development of neural rendering techniques um, try to approximate the forward Im imaging process using network. So actually, uh, in computer vision, the neural rendering uh, is classified all, uh, all the uh, techniques ca that can generate images is classified into neural rendering. But in this talk, uh, we are talking about the how to use the new rendering techniques to approximate the forward imaging process. So uh, here, here's an example. So given the uh, um, neural network, so we can input uh, the viewpoint geometry and lighting into the uh, neural network. Then after some computations in the, in, inside the network, we can output an image. So it's called a, a neural rendering. So with the, um, uh, we, uh, after we use a neural network to approximate the rendering process, we can compute the derivatives. We can use backward propagation to compute derivatives. 
to the from the inter, neural network to viewpoint geometry lighting. So uh, it's the advantage of neural rendering. So uh, there are several questions need to be solved in neural rendering. So first we how to first this we how to, how we how do we represent uh, input uh, using explicit way or in, implicit way. Second is how to design network and how to integrate the rendering uh, the rendering knowledge that already have been developed in computer graphics in uh, neural rendering. So the term neural rendering actually uh, starts from a science paper from DeepMind um, in 2018. So, <clears throat> so this is a network they designed in, in this paper. So given some observed images, they can learn some latent representation of the neural scene. Then, they, then they, we can train the rendering network to render the scene at a different, a different viewpoint. So after we uh, give the network a few images of the scene, the network can learn how to render the scene in, in varying viewpoints. So, uh, so although the input image is quite simple, it's, it's, it's from the computer rendered images, but its potential has been verified. Mm -hmm. So after the uh, after the science paper, there are a lot of research on the new rendering. So here's another uh, paper from a uh, theme representing network from NIPS 2019. So you try to develop a neural rack, neural network to learn the function. So, in, so given viewpoints, 3D positions, they can uh, render image. So this is the network. So th this. This paper first you uh, may be the first to use um, MRP network to uh, to uh, to predict the color of a 3D point along uh, in the rematching. So this is the network structure. So given the given the viewpoint, so the rotation, the translation, and this a projection matrix. So we we can unproject rays uh, for each pixel on the on the images. So we can uh, use this network, the, the user MRP network, to compute, to obtain a feature, and then convert it into a color. So this is um, so this paper uh, can model much more complex uh, things than the science paper. So this is some results. So it can also it can also um, generate novel views, even given only a single view. So that means the network has already remembered some knowledge how to predict the number view of an object. So this is the uh, famous neural, read, uh, neural reading sphere the paper. So it, it adopts spectral positional encoding to improve the quality of the render image. So given the ray and the viewpoint, the neural readings field network can approximate the rendering process very realistically. So it can be viewed as um, the network can, um, can remember the lighter field. So it's the view interpolation result. So it can also simulate the view dependent effects. So in, in, in addition, uh, the network can generate high quality depths given multi-view input images. So it can be directly used in some augmented reality applications. But the new re radius field can only um, handle static object. So without light change. So in, in the uh, outdoor scene, of, for example, from uh, internet images, the user might um, take the image at a different time in the day. So the lighting will change. So it's, it's very difficult for new radiance field to uh, directly handle such kind of such kind of inputs. So this is a new radiance. Uh, this is extension of the neural radiance field that uh, work. So it's called neural radiance field in Nerf in the wild. So it can learn some appearance in bending latent code to handle the change of the light. So we can see some results here. 
it's the it's the input so it's unconstrained photo connection so the change the light will change in different uh, photos so after we up the after they learn some um, appearance in bending latent vector, they can use this vector to handle different kinds of images to obtain a realistic rendering result. So the, you can also change the lighting using the appearance in bending, net, in bending vec vector, using, the, using that vector to control the appearance of the rendered image. Here's some core results. So furthermore, if we uh, import lighting, we can also uh, import lighting as a latent uh, representation into network to handle the change of the light. So this is another SIGGRAPH uh, uh, paper. So they use the Synthesize data as the training synthesis data as the training data. Okay, so they can handle the light change. So we can so they can simulate the time lapse effects for natural things. Okay, so they they are also use internet images. To train to test their network. So this is the construct geometry, and after training, after the training, you can simulate the light change. So next, I will uh, introduce uh, our work on a neural rendering. So th this is our paper on. That's the SIGWAR, scalable image-based indoor thing rendering with reflections. So the background is um, for indoor things, we can frequently observe some high frequency reflections, high frequency of beauty band reflections in the scene. So such a kind of specular, such as specular reflection, glossy reflection or mirrors. Although there already exists some uh, image-based indoor thing rendering uh, research works like inside or deep blending or free viewpoint, uh, uh, free viewpoint synthesis, and some uh, developed devices to capture um, view dependent effect. They cannot uh, efficiently render high frequency reflections in larger scale indoor scenes. So, this is a comparison between our work uh, and the, the state of art deep blending. Uh, net deep blending network. So we, we can see that uh, our uh, algorithm can produce temporally coherent reflection results with uh, realistic reflections. We, we can observe the reflections on the table. So there are two technical contributions of our work. First one is the we develop a global mesh guided robust two layer mesh construction algorithm. So given the captured image, we actually build two layer mesh, mesh representation for the image. So the first layer is the surface layer mesh. It represents the um, diffuse component of the image without specular or high frequency reflections. The second layer is a reflection layer mesh. It represents the environment geometry reflected by the table and the, the Reflect the colors, reflect highlights. The second one is the temporally coherent image-based rendering. So first, we develop a view selection method uh, that can take the pre take the previous frame into con consideration, and then we also develop a neural network to render the final result. We call it a super call it a super resolution network since we uh, downsample the uh, texture image since we want to save the memory footprint of the images based in those same uh, 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 algorithm. So we can see uh, the super resolution network can rectify the artifacts after we, after we after the image warping. So <clears throat> this is the magnified view. We can see that the, re the render results can be uh, significantly improved. 
And then, since we use CPRES network, our IBI pipeline, image-based learning pipeline, can support densely sampled images due to the um, saved text storage. So we can support support more than uh, 2,000 photographs for 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 an endorsing. But originally, the, pre the previous work only used uh, several hundred images, uh, even though. Uh, Nest image can save the capturing efforts, but it is very hard for them to capture the high frequency uh, reflections. So this is our pipeline. So the first pipeline is geometry processing. We, we first do some purview geometry processing and the construct two layer mesh. And the, the second, <clears throat> after the <clears throat> two layer mesh construction, we develop a rendering pipeline. Uh, it consists of um, view warping. Uh, it's, it's like the traditional image based render we do view warping with steps. And then we use a network, a random network to output the final render result. So let me uh, describe our pipeline uh, very quickly. So first is global mesh reconstruction. So we use multi-view uh, reconstruction and the collective fusion to reconstruct the geometry. So this is the multi-view re reconstruction result. <clears throat> and there are some holes uh, in the textualist area. So we can use Connected fusion to improve the quality of the ge uh, reconstruct geometry. So this is the reconstruct the geometry for endorsing. <clears throat> the, the second step is we want to refine the depths at each view. So it, the purpose of this refinement is to align the geometry image with the image uh, geometry edge with the image edge. So that way to reduce the tearing or ghostly effects in the view blending. So this is the, this is, we can see some mismatch between the geometry edge and the image edge. So we can do um, refinement. So this one, we, we first remove the misalignment between the geometry image and the mesh uh, and, and the image edge. So we then we do the, um, age wear depth in the pollution uh, to align the geometry and the image age. So with the refined geometry, we construct the surface layer mesh. So this, the last step in geometry processing is the two layer representation reconstruction. So in the, for each captured image, we want to decompose the image into surface and the reflection layer images. That means we, we use the linear composition uh, assumption to obtain the separation. So the image IK can be decomposed into IK0 is the diffuse image and IK1 is the reflection image. So the beta is a mask to indicate where the reflection is in the image. So it's the reflection mask. So actually the reflection mask indicates the reflective surface in the image. So, uh, and this is the surface layer image and the, and the reflection layer image. So we can see only the reflected things are uh, remained in the reflection layer image. <clears throat> so actually um, to robustly obtain the reflection decomposition, we use the global mesh, uh, reconstruct global mesh as a prior information to enforce some constraints. So uh, the first one is we want to detect um, uh, some reflective planes in, in the scene uh, from the reconstruct geometry. So this is used uh, uh, another SQL paper algorithm. So we can use the cost of volume to detect whether there are uh, multi, multiple peaks in, in the cost volume for reflect plane detection. Then we can, we do some reflection mask detections. Uh, So after we obtain the uh, reflection mask, we can use the uh, an automating optimization algorithm to obtain the two layer um, two layer mesh two layer meshes and the two layer images. So this is the object function. Uh, the optimizing variable in our algorithm is the uh, rigid transformation of the reflection layer mesh. And the, the, and the geometry of the 
and the, and the non-rated transformation, this is, this is the, uh, like the displacement vectors for the surface and the refraction layer meshes. So finally, we want to obtain the surface and the reflection layer images. So uh, for the, uh, to initialize our optimizing variables, we use the global geometry as we mentioned before. So we, we use the surface layer mesh <coughs> to initialize the M1, uh, MK0, and we use the reflected uh, mesh, uh, uh, the reflected global geometry mesh. Uh, the reflection is along, uh, along the reflector plane to obtain the, M obtain the reflected geometry. Uh, the surface, the, the reflection layer mesh. So it's MQ, MQ1, okay. So we, with these two, with these two layer meshes, we can walk the image at, between the different views to obtain the initialization of IQ, IQ0 and IQ1. Okay, so it's the multi-view warping. So, and uh, we use the mean composition to obtain the initialized IQ0. So it means the initialized uh, surface uh, image, uh, diffuse image. And uh, we use the, we directly subtract the diffuse image from the original image to obtain the initial, initialized the reflection image, IQ, IQ1. Okay, so the, op, the optimizing optical function actually consists of some uh, data term. So it's, it's used to constrain the rendered image to be similar to the um, uh, original captured image. Okay, this is the, uh, visualization of the data term. So we also use some regular, regularization term or prior term uh, to regularize the optimization. So uh, the final one is the multi-view consistent check. So since we are capturing uh, multi-views of a scene, so we can use the, the, uh, the, uh, the multi-view images to constrain, the, uh, resolu con constrain our solution. So we can, so, the details can uh, please refer to our paper for details. Okay, so this show here we show some uh, decomposition comparisons. So given the reference image, so we can use uh, some uh, deep learning based or some um, uh, geometry based reflection separation and reflection decomposition algorithms. So this one is from the Sigma of 2012. So we can see without the explicit, uh, explicitly reconstruct geometry, their, their decomposition result is not good. So the second one is from a deep learning based reflection decomposition algorithm, but we can see they cannot um, reconstruct the reflection well. So this is our result. So we, since we already reconstructed global geometry, so we can obtain much uh, more robust reflection decomposition results. So this is, uh, this video shows the running result with and the result decomposition. So we can see here. So without the reflection decomposition, we can see blurred uh, result, render results on the TV screen and the, the reflected, and the, the, reflected the, 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 the reflected ground. So with two layer mesh reconstruction, we can see realistic rendering of the reflections. So the, we can see the reflections on the black or white board. So for the rendering pipeline, we first do some view warping. Now, this is uh, very similar to the traditional image-based rendering technique. But we develop um, a normal view selection scheme. So this is the uh, view selection. So, but we want to take the, pre the previous theorem as in, into account to remove the temporal difference. So this is, um, this is a, a, a visualization. So, but we, we, we intentionally separate, separate the space around the uh, current virtual viewpoint into different, in different regions so we can, and we use Already, we, 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 we also put the already selected views in the previous, previous frame in, the, in these regions so that we can, we, can, mm, we can reduce the sudden change of the selected viewpoints for the view blending to, to improve the temporal coherence. So, and we also do some uh, floating geometry uh, removal 
before we do image blending. Uh, this we use a image based rendering course to reduce the floating the, ge the if the influence of the floating geometry. So after this, we can do some blending. Uh, for blending, we also take care of the depths boundaries. So we, we use some width decay in the, along the best uh, depths boundaries, so we can reduce some uh, tearing or costing effects. So <clears throat> after we warping. We already obtained some initial rendering results, but uh, it, it contains a lot of artifacts. So we develop a neural network to refine the rewarping result and obtain the, final, uh, obtain the final images. So this network is, uh, is adapted from the super sampling network in SIGGRAPT uh, 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 2020. So in the super sampling network in SIGGRAPT 2020, so they assume the random result is from a, from a game. So the geometry is perfect. So we, that means we can obtain very clean depth data. But in our case, since we reconstruct the geometry from multiple images, there are many noise inside in our uh, preview refined geometries, uh, preview refined depths. So we, so we, Add, um, we, so we add a motion a rectification module inside the network to reduce the error caused by the inaccurate depths. So this is the, our motion uh, rectification module. So we can, we can see the effect of the motion rectification module. So, so without the motion rectification module, we can see many, Many errors. So the white color indicates larger, indicates larger, um, larger errors between warped uh, frame and the current frame. So after motion rectification, we can reduce such kind of errors. So this is the <clears throat> effect of the motion rectification module. So we can see the boundaries can be improved. So with the Supervision network, uh, we can reduce artifacts in the in, in, in the view warping result. So, for example, the ghosting at the image boundaries. So this is the uh, aliasing at the at the edge of the uh, the table. But the, after the network, the artifacts can be removed. Here we show a demo comparison between the warping and the, the result after super resolution network. So in this slide, we show uh, some statistics of our <clears throat> reconstruct indoor scenes. So the areas of the indoor scenes and the capture number of images and the, the storage required for each scene. So we can see, and we also compare our algorithm with some state-of-art image-based rendering algorithms for indoor scenes. So we can see our result is on the top left. So we can realistically render the reflections in the mirror or the highlights on the sofa. <coughs> so we also compare our results with NERF. So we can see the NERF results can, the NERF can generate not bad results, but uh, there are still some artifacts there. So here we show some quantitative uh, comparisons. So for these kind of, for the things we reconstructed in our paper, we can obtain very, uh, very good um, PSNR and the SSM uh, scores. So we are we are almost achieved the best PSNR and SSM score. So here we show more results. So this is a hotel room. So we can see the reflections on the frame of the, uh, this picture. So 
So we'll choose not translation motions of the virtual viewpoint. So here's the uh, field case of our uh, algorithm. So we our algorithm our, our algorithm um, mainly handle the planar reflective surface. So it might uh, produce some blue the render result or curve the surface. So this is the ground truth, but our render result is blurred. So in future, we want to um, research on how to exploit the rendering knowledge to improve the generation ability of neural rendering. And then we want to uh, investigate how to use the neural rendering work to improve the reconstruction and the rendering result at, at simultaneously. So this, uh, this may be also a very hot risk topic in neural rendering. So, oh, <clears throat> So in the following, I will introduce our another work on reflection removal, so called the location aware single image reflection removal. So it's published on last year ICCV. So in the previous uh, work, we use multiple images to render the indoor things with reflections, but uh, in a lot of situations, we might take photos behind the glass. So there may be, there may be uh, very strong reflections on the, on the glass. So we want to remove such kind of reflections. So as we uh, as we know, uh, so the 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 strength of the reflection is determined by the Fresnel term in, in in optics. And um, after the spectral refraction, the light will be polarized. So we can use a polarizer to remove the reflections, but it needs some hardware. So we cannot use it in our, maybe like for example, a, a mobile phone or, or our, uh, cam our cameras. So um, there are a lot of research work on how to remove the reflections in single image using, uh, using optimization or neural networks. So since uh, there are, Many, many number of unknowns. So for each image pixel, we need to know, we need to determine its reflection color and uh, its transmission color. So it's, it's an ear post problem. So not a prior such as gradient sparsity, gradient sparsity, relative smoothness of Gaussian cues has already, have already been introduced in single image based reflection removal. However, the, um, the, or assume that the reflections are not strong or something or some or somewhere uh, are somewhat blurred at the boundary. Therefore, for the, some strong reflections, that means their boundaries is very sharp in the captured images. The, this method always uh, usually um, cannot obtain. Uh, good reflection removal results. So, for example, we show some uh, reflection removal results with state of art neural uh, deep learning based reflection uh, removal algorithms. So, this is the uh, ERNet, so IBCLN, so IMNet, I, and uh, they, are, they are all uh, state of art uh, deep learning based reflection removal algorithms, but we can see the reflections are still remained on the in the uh, in the result, so <clears throat> so here's here is um, our um, our network, the result of our, our network. So we propose um, a location aware a single image reflection move network. So that means we we first we use the uh, we train network to learn a reflection conf confidence map. So that means we train the network to learn where is the strong reflections to detect the reflection domain the regions and then remove the strong reflection. So this is our, this is our result. So the strong reflections on the original image, captured image is almost, uh, almost removed. So it's so comparing with the 
uh, another state about dependent based reflection removal algorithms, we can see the difference. So this is their result. So this is our result. So this is the uh, <coughs> um, additional results. So we can see we can we 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 show that we our network can detect the reflections, strong reflections from the input image. So our observation is that we can use the Laplacian operate, a second differential operate to suppress the low frequency reflections. And then, and then we can use the difference between the original image and the, the image processed with the Laplacian operate to detect the stronger reflections. So here we show um, two examples. So after, so this is the original image. So <clears throat> if we use the first order differential operate like uh, to detect like edge operate to detect edges, we can see the reflections still remains in the edge map. In the, however, if we use the Laplacian operate, we can see that the low frequency reflections. So that means the fractions, the reflections is blurred in the captured image. We can we we are hardly to see the blurred reflections in after the image processed by the Laplacian operate. So that means we can use the difference between the original image and the image processed by Laplacian operator to re, to suppress the low frequency reflections since there are no <clears throat> and then detect the uh, stronger, uh, um, stronger, stronger reflections. So here is the um, here is the um, refle a stronger reflection detection results. So we use multi-scale Laplacian features to detect the uh, Reflection uh, re reflection area, so we call it the reflection confidence map. That means we detect some stronger reflections. So you can see the white area indicates there are stronger reflections. So it's the um, predicted reflection layer, and it's the uh, recovered for transmission layer. So we use the original uh, Laplacian operator as the initialization, and we net network to learn the weights of the Laplacian kernel. So our network actually is an um, iterative network like IPCRN. So we developed a reflection detection module. So this is the architecture of the reflection detection module. So we use the multi-scale Laplacian operator to, to obtain the multi-scale Laplacian features. Then we, then we input the features into a uh, residue block to get the features and then we predict the ASI map. And the, the ASI map is trained in an unsupervised way so we can, so it can be uh, clarified in our learning laws of the introduction learning laws. So <clears throat> this is the autoencoder to recover the uh, transmission layer, transmission layer. So we use the, the convolution plus uh, relu plus uh, 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 lightweight attention based module called CBM to reconstruct a transmission. So this is the result. So the training loss. So we, uh, since we don't have the one to choose reflection map for each, for each image. So we use an unsupervised way to train the, to train the, to train the network. So that means the network only need to to be trained by the uh, MSC loss between the predicted image and the uh, ground truth transmission image. And we use this, uh, we use uh, a, linear, a linear blending formula like the, uh, in this one, I equals W uh, multiplied T plus R. So W is the mask, T is the transmission, I is the reflection. So we, we directly use this, uh, this formula to us to train the to change that work to, to predict, the, predict the reflection confidence map in the unsupervised way. Okay, so here we here is some of the quantitative results. 
So it's also, uh, you, we also use the PSN and the SSM metric to measure the quality of the uh, predicted transmission image. So this is the, so our network can pr produce um, very good, um, can produce very good um, transmission images. So it's ranked as uh, you, number one or number two in all the trend, all the tested data sets. So here we show some qualitative results. So this is the comparison between our reflection routes with four existing uh, state-of-art deep learning-based reflection removal methods. So this is orange image, mixed image. This is um, this is uh, the results of other methods. This is our result. So we can see our result can remove more reflections on the image. That means that doesn't it doesn't mean that it's perfect. There are already uh, there are still some remaining reflections, but uh, hmm, our result is better than other methods in this quality of comparisons. This is another comparison. So we can, our method can remove the reflected high, highlights. Okay, uh, uh, that's all for my talk today. So thank you for your watching. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for a great talk. Okay, so now uh, we are in the Q&A session. So uh, let me see if we have any questions or comments from the audience. So yeah, the audiences, uh, audiences can ask questions by using the chat box at the, the, the live streaming service. So. I think there there is no question yet. Okay. So, okay. So uh, let me ask a question first. So uh, about the first method. Uh, so in my understanding, the method is for uh, specifically designed for indoor scenes. Uh, but yes. I, I'm I'm wondering uh, what is the primary difference between indoor scenes and outdoor scenes or in mm -hmm. other words uh, i'm wondering whether this method the proposed method can work uh, with outdoor scenes such as uh, buildings with reflective glasses or something like that okay so uh, so we uh, apply this method to indoor scenes for two reasons uh, first one is that we, we mainly handle reflect planes. So for indoor things, there are, uh, you, there are many planes, right? So <clears throat> it can handle, so our method can handle such kind of uh, reflections. So the second one is we use global mesh to construct a two layer representation. So for uh, auto things, if, if, the, if the auto thing, if a reflect surface is reflecting the sky, so there, are, <laughs> there may be no, Global mesh there, so mm. um, let's, uh, so it's it's a limitation of our network. But we can use the neural rendering technique to handle such kind of things. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, um, I think the the principle of our work can be applied to outdoor things, but uh, it may be some uh, specific adaptation of our algorithm. I think it's 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 it's. It's not very difficult. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, you're welcome. Okay. Any questions from the audience? Maybe not yet. Okay, so then uh, let me ask another question. So uh, about the second method, uh, so this is a quick question. So, mm -hmm. uh, what happens if the target object itself has a strong highlights? Okay, so that means there are strong highlights in the uh, transmission, right? Oh uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, so 
So my answer is that we depends on the difference, not the, so we, we so in our pipelines, we use the original image. First, we use detect the, we compute the Laplacian feature of the original image, original mm -hmm. image that, and then the, and then the predictions and then the Laplace features of the transmission images. So it actually depends on difference. So in the, in, in the original image, if we use the Laplace operator, the low frequency refraction is already is, is suppressed. So in that area, there might be, the difference might be very small between the original image and the, the, and the uh, predict transmission images. So that means that's the reason why we can detect stronger reflections. So if the, uh, the object in the transmission image contains the strong highlights, but the difference is still minor between the image processed by the Laplace operator. So that means we, we should be able to handle such kind of high highlights in the, uh, on the transmission the highlights on the transmission objects, since we are we, since we are based on difference, not the Laplace operator, we are based on difference after the Laplace operator. Uh, maybe <laughs> it's a little bit uh, involved. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the answer. Answer. So, in my understanding, there is no questions from the audience and it's okay. time to move on to the next speaker okay so thank you for the talk great talk thank you uh, so thank you for, thank you yuki so, yeah okay so i stopped i stopped uh, uh, screen sharing